The cold days have returned to New England. The woodshed is stacked full of wood. The dog has taken his place in front of the wood stove for the next few months. And it's time for me to fight with this thing again. Let me back up here a minute. So some time ago, my wife said to me, Can we get one of those fans that sits on top of the wood stove? So I said, said, sure, I can make one. Despite only having a lathe and a more vague understanding of machining than I do now, this is what I came up with. This is a Manson engine. It's a hot air engine similar to a Stirling engine, but a little bit simpler in construction. It works by essentially forcing air back and forth between a hot part of the chamber and a cold part of the chamber, expanding and contracting, driving the piston up and down. The problem with it is it doesn't work. I fought with it a bunch, gotten frustrated, pushed it to the back burner. It doesn't work there either. But I'm gonna take another crack at it here. I'm gonna break this thing down and show you what I think is going on with it. At the risk of confusing myself, I'll try to explain how this works in a little bit more detail. So inside the bottom here, there's a Teflon ring that separates the cold chamber from the hot chamber. And inside that is a displacer that has a gap around it. And so as this moves down, it forces hot air from the hot side of the chamber up to the cold side, which cools off, which continues pulling that piston down. So the stroke is actually powering itself. When it gets to the bottom, a port opens, breaks that vacuum, lets it go past center, start going back up. Now the cold air is getting forced to the hot end and expanding, which is driving it back up again. This is the hole for the port that opens when it is all the way in the cold end. Based on the testing I did before I added the ports, I'm pretty confident that this part of it works the way it's supposed to. I can hear the port popping as it opens and closes. So I don't think the problem is here. I think the issue with this is just an issue of there's too much friction and probably some things here that aren't aligned very well. Without having the connecting rod and the piston on here, you can see it spins a lot better. This little upright was cut on my CNC router, and I'm not entirely sure that it's the most precise part. It might be that it's canted in or out a little bit, and it also only has one ball bearing in here, and with only one bearing, you do get a little bit of play in the shaft. So I'm gonna remake this part and try to fix some of those issues. I'm also not entirely convinced that this pin is totally straight in the crank. So this is a aluminum connecting rod, bronze pin. It's not the worst bearing in the world. And it does move freely on its own, but I'm gonna redo this with a ball bearing in there as well. These threads are pretty much gone, so I'm gonna drill those down and re-tap them. This is one of those things where I'm using the bottom of the quill travel as a quill stop. I really don't wanna break through into that cylinder. And I'm not gonna get a whole lot of thread in there, so I'll probably go to a fine thread. I had to go in with the bottoming tap and then grind a little off the ends of the screws. And now it fits perfectly. If I hadn't already drilled this out, counterbored it, I probably would have gone off center with the holes where there's a little more meat. Since there is a clearance around these screws, it's not going to keep this piece aligned. So I'm going to ream some holes and put some pins in. Now I can pull this apart and put it back together and it will stay aligned. The hole I need to put here is referenced off of this face. I'm gonna go back and clean up most of this once I actually make sure everything works, but I'm gonna even up these sides while I'm set up and I know where the center line is. Rubber seals do add a slight amount of friction to these. So I'm gonna pop out the ones that are in the middle. I'll probably go back and pop out all of them, clean that grease out.
The new bearings are larger, so I'm remaking the shaft on the crankshaft. So that's a problem. I pressed this in again with some Loctite and I'm using a fresh threading die and it's going a lot better now. Originally I turned this hub and then cut the pockets for the blades and the blades on the CNC router. And the hole in the middle was threaded originally. I want to just drill it out and ream it to 3 8 to fit the new shaft because that'll give a better location on the shaft than the threads. Keying this thing onto the shaft is probably pretty excessive given the little bit of torque it'll see, but since I've got the brooch, might as well. Having a bunch of free ground end mills is really handy when you're trying to pick up an existing hole in a piece of scrap that you're repurposing. Just plunge it in and then ream it to final size. I want to turn the shank on this thing around. And that's something I could fiddle around with the four jaw chuck and get it running true. But I think it's going to be easier to just turn it up since I'm already on the center line and pop a couple center holes in this. That would be a pretty brutal interrupted cut on the lathe, so I'm gonna rough out a bit of material here first. I've got this between centers and just have one chuck jaw acting as a driver because this is square and weird and couldn't really put a dog on it very well.
Get some hand filing on that, and it looks functional. Bearing's a slip fit, so I'm going to use a little Loctite on here. One of the other issues with the vertical design is on this stroke, it's lifting the weight of the piston. And now that I have this moving a little better, I can do some more work getting it balanced. Playing with some weights, I've got a three quarter inch long quarter inch pin taped on there. And that gets it pretty close. So I probably need to take about that much metal out of here. I did some more filing and some drilling on it. And I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it. Well, with this thing all back together, I think this is where the truth comes out. And there's still just too much drag on this. This shaft is probably about two and a half thou under what it should be, and there's just way too much play in that. An admittedly lame way of fixing this, because it is pretty close, is to just attack the thing with the center punch. Still very slight play in that, but I think it's actually in the bearings. I've got a fresh 3 8 pin in there. I've got this centered up within tolerance of the stroke, but this needs to be a quarter inch pin and it needs to be. Up. And this pin needs to be in line with the main shaft. So I've got this in a collet block squared up in the vise. So what I'm going to do is come in with this, which is a hollow mill, which isn't real common, but I'll show you what it does here. So that's great, other than the fact that it's about nine thousandths oversized. <sighs> I consulted with the machinery's handbook, and that's actually what it's supposed to do. Okay, fine, I'll do it with the boring head. been doing a bit more troubleshooting off camera with this and without the base on it I feel like I've gotten that moving pretty well now. In my continuing to grasp at straws I want to improve the cooling on this a little bit so I'm going to make the cooling fins a little deeper and I'm also going to put a 10 degree angle on each of them. So that should help keep the cool side cool but in cleaning this up I noticed something if you look right by where the port is here, you'll notice there's a little tiny wrinkle right there where it's just pushed up a little bit. And I think what's happening is I'm not getting a very good seal between the cylinder and that port. So it's actually leaking from the chamber into that port. So I'm going to sleeve this with a piece of steel and re-drill that.
since the piston was kind of beat up, I reamed the cylinder undersize and I'm just polishing the piston to fit. Did you see that? So even with this hot, what I'm getting is a little rebound, which means that the air that's being pushed down isn't cooling fast enough to draw the piston down. Rather than a suction stroke, it's compressing it. Going back to the original article from Mr. Manson about the design, it calls for two or three asbestos washers are fitted between the piston flange and the displacer to prevent as far as possible heat getting to the cold end. Now, I didn't have any asbestos washers on hand, so I made it all out of aluminum, solid piece, probably conducts heat pretty well. So I'm gonna remake this whole thing. There's a couple changes I wanna make here too. I'm gonna make the displacer out of a piece of Delrin that should prevent heat from traveling up and then make the piston out of some bronze. So it turns out Delrin melts at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 175C. I'm gonna skip over the one I made out of that and go right to making one with PFTE, Teflon. I mean, it's just plastic, right? PTFE machines beautifully, amazingly well. Problem is bonding to it. I tried friction welding it, but I couldn't get it quite hot enough to work. But with a little bit of sanding and good clean surfaces, it seems like super glue does stick to it. We got a nice tight fit here, so. It snaps in there well. Of course, once the super glue heats up, it falls apart. So I made one that threads together on the cold side and gets a little super glue just in case. So that one almost worked, but with the Teflon being this thin, it is still prone to warping at high temperatures. So what I finally settled on was aluminum displacer, Teflon cap threaded into it, bronze piston, and that seems to be working. Because of all that, things get out of order here a little bit, but just play along. drilling the cold side port a little bit smaller this time and I'm drilling it opposite the other port. I'm still getting a little bit of drag somewhere in it. I think it's on that wrist pin there.
I'm going to put a number six set screw in the end of the connecting rod to hold it onto the pin. It's a funny angle to get in the vise, but the angle doesn't really matter. So let's get this thing together and see what happens. So now I have a steel pin that's going to be attached to the connecting rod and run in the bronze on the piston. For the initial testing, I've got the fan blades off. Let's go see if it works. Hitting it with the blowtorch. It works! It actually works! Look at it! It's working! <clears throat> I don't know if it really comes across in the video just how much this thing has kicked my butt. This project was probably above my pay grade, but as an amateur with some clapped out tools, everything is above my pay grade. This might be the coolest thing I've ever made, but it's also been the most challenging and most frustrating. I know I could make an electric wood stove fan, but that's not the route I've chosen to go with this. I did all of this off of the ratios and notes that other people have established for Manson engines, not off of any sort of proven design. So there's been a lot of trial and error. Uh, there's been a lot of guesswork and there's been a lot of process of elimination to try to figure out what was wrong with it. I've got a pile of parts here that I've remade for this, some of them multiple times. I feel like getting this thing to the point where it runs at all is a success. Uh, these things are just so inefficient and generate so little power that everything needs to be exactly right for it to work. But getting from the point where it runs by blasting it with the torch on the bench to actually making it run on the wood stove is another challenge entirely. I did a bunch more tweaking off camera and some of the stuff that you've already seen to try to get it to run on the wood stove. So if you were paying very careful attention, some of the video was out of order a little bit. I really liked this cast iron base, but it was just taking too long to heat up and sucking up too much heat. So I made another one out of aluminum. I did go back and remake this upright again because I was still having some alignment issues. And I'll show you what I did on that. I made a little alignment bar expanding mandrel that fits inside the bore. Got this all dialed in. I'm not taking any chances this time, and since I'm out on the end of a springboard here, as I was clamping this in and getting the jack in place, I had an indicator on here so I could make sure that I wasn't deflecting it. I've gotten it to the point where it will run on the wood stove very slowly under ideal conditions, so it's not an effective fan yet. I've learned a lot from this, and I have a lot of ideas for tweaks I want to try on it to make it an effective fan, but I also have a lot more projects I want to work on right now, so I'm going to leave this here for now. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'm going to be sitting here staring at this thing.